know, that's just one of the governments obviously involved in all of this. We also have been reading about the UK government strategy for this pandemic. There's confusion about the herd immunity proposal and what it means. So let me ask you straight up, what is your advice for Prime Minister Boris Johnson? Well, first, uh, advisors advise and really ministers decide. I believe that was from Margaret Thatcher back in the day. So I wouldn't wish to interfere uh, with any uh, other country's uh, policy decisions. Uh, but let me just try to give you my understanding of the science or the assumptions behind the UK's policy as I understand them. So the first presupposition is the UK thinks that it has a very important, perhaps silver bullet, and that is massive social distancing and non-pharmaceutical interventions that we have seen uh, China, South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Italy of late deploy. But I think that they are presupposing that this so-called very drastic, even draconian bullet can only be fired once, i.e. you cannot keep locking down whole populations or asking people to adhere to very, very drastic social distancing measures. And therefore, you could only do it probably for a month, maybe two, maximum three months, something like that. And so that's why they have, I think, as I understand it, decided not to use it quite yet because they don't think they're at that stage of the pandemic in the UK yet. Presupposition two, and that is to say that they believe that they could probably with their policies segregate by age in terms of social mixing such that they could preferentially protect those who are in the older adult age group. And the reason you need to protect them as a priority is because they are more susceptible to being infected. And once infected and show symptoms, they also have a much higher likelihood of having very severe disease or even dying from the disease. So I think that these two presuppositions is what has led to what we now learn uh, as the UK policy. So apparently, if you look at the numbers, these are still manageable levels for their health system. And I think the overarching goal is that the health system, the National Health Service, actually does not find itself overwhelmed and that its search capacity at any point in time can and will deal with the surge in patients. So they're trying to spread out the flow of seriously ill patients into the hospitals. Now, clearly, there is a lot of assumptions, a lot of calculations, a lot of estimations, and quite frankly, a lot of trade-offs behind that decision. And uh, I think that that's why people are now using a corollary or even a side effect of that strategy and giving it its moniker, the herd immunity strategy. But I think that herd immunity is merely a corollary. So if you allow this to go and essentially infect the population, then some of the people are going to be infected and then recover and then be immune to it, presumably. And that's where the herd immunity corollary comes in. I think that it is a, it's not a risk-free proposition. How you can segregate by age and preferentially protect older people, how you can control the rate of infection, the so-called burn through of the entire population such that you would be able to tune it and time it that you do not overwhelm the National Health Service. I think there, this is technically a difficult policy to pull off, but if they were able to pull it off, it would be a stroke of genius. However, I'm not sure that I would have recommended this strategy because it is so tricky 
to make sure that all the pieces fall into place at the right time in order to pull it off. And that is why you see that the majority of countries in the world have actually taken what I call the East Asian approach. So China, South Korea, after a very large or several very large outbreaks, were able to, using our strategy, actually bring down the infection and the epidemic curve quite substantially and quite successfully, at least for the first wave. Hong Kong and Singapore never really has had a first wave yet. We have never really had a self-sustained local epidemic yet. Everything that we've got are highly clustered. Uh, about half of them are imported cases. And if you look at whether each person who is infected can on average pass it on to another one, neither Hong Kong nor Singapore have actually consistently and persistently gone above that threshold. So I would have preferred to take this approach as opposed to the much more sophisticated, but I think also much riskier UK approach. I think kind of high risk, high reward if it works, but if it doesn't, then there will be problems. If you're just tuning in, we're talking to Professor Gabriel Leung, the Dean of Medicine at the University of Hong Kong, one of the world's top experts on the crisis at hand. 